So my name is Emily Wilson. As you guys heard yesterday, I was born in sunny Santa Monica, California. How many of you guys have ever been to Santa Monica? How many of you have never been to California before? A whole lot of you. Well, I think you should go because I love California. California is a great place. All right, so to, this talk is called God is in the day to day. And to open it, I want to show you guys a video that really made me look at my life and might help you look at yours. So if we can cue that. I saw him pull out of the parking lot and turn right, and the box is still stuck under his car. So who knows how long he was driving with that box under his car. I like bet he got home, he pulled into his driveway. Out in the sky. I'm not. I'm not wow. You're like me this. It's not. It's not real. I don't think real. it's real. Ooh. I don't think it's Maybe real. Maybe there's a way. Did I see the line of her car? Wasted. The Empire State Building is like really close to it. Right? So we look at our lives and we're talking about God in the day to day. How are we ever going to see or hear God in our lives if we're like this all day long, right? We see it everywhere we go. Everyone is entranced by social media and all these things. So that, I think, among our generation, yours and myself, as young people in the world, that is the first foundational problem that is keeping us from seeing God in the day to day is our phones and our screens and all those kinds of things. Another thing that's keeping us from seeing God in the day to day is all the stuff we have in our lives. How many of you guys play sports? Yeah, sports. I was expecting a little more gusto out of you guys. Right? Maybe you're just tired from morning practices still that you had to do during the year. How many people are involved in theater? <laughs> Gotta love the theater nerds. I was one for sure. How many, what's the most obscure thing? Any of you guys do like crew? Some crew people, some rowing. Uh, how many of you play lacrosse? I guess that's probably not obscure here. Okay, I want to find the person who plays the most sports. How many people play one sport? Okay, how many people play two? Three. Four sports. Five sports? Six sports. She plays six sports. Twelve. Okay. So the problem with our lives in high school is that we're so involved in all these things, right? We go from practice to musical rehearsal. We're in class all day long, right? And then we're, we're tired and we get home and we have to do our homework. And there's no time because our lives are filled with stuff. Not necessarily bad stuff. None of those things are bad, but they're just things. 
So those things keep us from looking at our connection with God. We're involved in all these things. In the age of distraction with our phones and our sports and musical and whatever else you guys are involved in, we must be intentional about seeking God in the day-to-day. What does that look like? What does your prayer life look like right now? Take a second to think about that. What does your prayer life look like? Maybe it's totally non-existent. Maybe it looks like absolutely nothing. Maybe it looks like Sunday Mass. Maybe it looks like being involved in the scriptures, going to adoration. What does it look like for you? As high schoolers, we must be intentional about making that time for God. And what does that look like? In my high school experience, I was involved in youth group. Like I told you guys, I went to Steubenville and I served on the confirmation team. But it didn't really go beyond that. I went to Mass on Sundays. But looking back, I wish I had made a more structured prayer life and gotten involved in more things. You know, gotten involved in going to adoration. Started praying the rosary and things like that. And I told you guys last night about the struggles that I had in college. So when I was at college, like I said, people treated me pretty bad and I got the choice. Do I choose faith? Do I choose the world? And I chose faith. And it was really cool because that's when my structured prayer life started to, you know, evolve. I found a daily mass to go to on campus. It was at 1140 every morning at ASU in the middle of campus. And I started going. And I started to see the richness of my life just kind of grow and expand. And I started praying the rosary. And that structure and that prayer life of rhythm as a young person really helped me to start growing my faith and start a rhythm of prayer and start being able to see God in the day-to-day. How many of you have heard the story of Elijah and the whispering wind in the Bible? Some of you. So I want to talk a little bit about this scripture for it, with you. It's in the first book of Kings says... This is what God says to Elijah. Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. And when he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. A voice said to him, Elijah, why are you here? And that's the thing about our lives and that's the thing about having a relationship with God. As much as I wish God would just fly out of the sky right now and speak to us, he could but he hasn't yet. God speaks in that quiet. He doesn't speak, he didn't speak to Elijah in the fire. He didn't speak in the earthquake. And that's the problem. We're so, we become so deaf by all these things that fill our lives that we're not able to hear God. So I want to take a couple minutes and be like Elijah to sit, for you guys to just sit, just like a minute. And just listen. We haven't had really any silence going on here, a little bit maybe during Mass. But I want to just take a minute for you guys to close your eyes. Because God speaks in silence. And that's how we can find God in our day-to-day, is by quieting down for a little bit at a time. So I'm going to give you guys just a minute of silence.
Isn't that nice and peaceful? In our God, in our day-to-day -day life, we will never be able to hear him if we don't shut off. If we don't stop listening to music for a little bit, if we don't take some time to just be. Blessed Mother Teresa has a great quote um, that I love a lot. I'm trying to learn how to work this thing. There it is. It says, we need to find God. And he cannot be found in noise and restlessness. God is the friend of silence. See how nature, trees, flowers, grass grows in silence. See the stars, the moon, and the sun, how they move in silence. We need silence to be able to touch souls. So that's one way that we can connect with God in our day-to-day -day lives, is just slowing down, is just finding that quiet place, and just disconnecting from the world in order for God to speak to us. Another way to find God is through our experiences in our days. A lot of people have the misconception that we're only going to find God in churches, like this one. How many of you know what that is? Notre Dame in Paris. So many people think that God is only going to be found within the walls of the church. Is that true? No. I want to show you guys some places where I find God in my own life, where I can connect with God in my day-to-day -day life, things that I just see and I'm like, Lord, thank you. I know that you're with me. This is one of the first ones. How many of you guys see beautiful sunrises? Yeah, right? I love the clapping. So many good sunrises where you just look at that and you're like, that's, like I see God in that. I see God in beautiful sunrises. I see God in one of my favorite things in the world. Whoop. Can we go back one? Is that possible? Babies. Oh, I love babies. I see babies. There's a girl, Alicia, up there, and she has a really cute baby. And you see, I see that baby. Yeah, woo. Apparently they love her. Um, but I see babies, and I see that that is the creation of God. Like, how beautiful is that? That brings me so much joy to see a little baby and say, that is Christ making new creation all the time. Next one, sunsets. That's California. You should all come visit because it's really, really pretty. Right? Another place I see God is in my siblings. I have an awesome family. That's Gracie on the right, and then Tommy, and then Anime, and then myself. I see Christ in the way they love me. I see Christ in our relationships. How many of you take the time to see God in your day-to-day -day through your relationships with your siblings? I know in high school that can be almost impossible, right? With your little brother nagging on you, your little sister slamming doors, and I don't know, borrowing your clothes, and putting nail polish on your things, but I see God in my life, in the day-to-day, -day, through my relationships with them. How many of you like good snacks? Right? That was a retreat I went on once. I told you I worked at an all-girls Catholic school, and on retreats we just ate a lot of junk food. One of my favorite stories, how many of you guys know who David Crowder is? God will love him. Okay, so one of my favorite stories that has to do with snacks and food and finding God is that he was in a food court one day. He gets a Chick-fil-A sandwich, which I know all of you have had at lunch, right? How are those good? So David Crowder is sitting in this food court eating a Chick-fil-A sandwich, and he was kind of down and out. He was kind of like feeling kind of bad. And it, he says it was the best chicken sandwich I ever had that I just started to weep. He started to cry because of this Chick-fil-A sandwich. And he felt like God was speaking to him in, in how good this chicken sandwich was that God would allow him to eat this good chicken and he just knew the goodness of the Lord in that chicken sandwich. So maybe you're eating a Limon Lay, right? 
And you just taste that and you're like, thank you, Lord, for that chicken sandwich or whatever that is. Just finding God in those maybe things that you wouldn't think about, like David Crowder's chicken sandwich, but that you could, you know, see the goodness of God in. This is a text my dad sent me. I know it says, Daddy, I'm almost 25. I don't care. I love my daddy. He just sends me that one day. You're great. Love, Dad. Do we stop to see how Christ loves us through other people? Do I stop to see when my friend does something nice to me? Do I stop and see that as Christ in my life? Or do I just see that as something nice that my friend did for me? You know? Do I look at my relationships, like I said with my siblings? Do I look at those kind of things and see God in my day-to-day life through that? Another way I see God is in joyful people. This is another one of my favorite pictures. How great is this picture? I see God so much in people who are bright, who shine the light of Christ, who are always laughing and just bright spirited. I see God in my day-to-day through things like this. I don't know these two girls. I just found this online. But I look at that and I see God in that joy. I see God in, you know, those people who, who just happy people, make you feel good, all those kinds of things. So those are a couple ways that I see God in my day-to-day life. So what does that look like for you? What does seeing God in your day-to-day life look like? And the thing about our relationship with God in our day-to-day life is that it's not just going to happen, right? We don't just have a relationship with God out of the blue by doing nothing. Our relationship with God is something we must intentionally seek. We must intentionally seek God. He's always seeking us, like we've talked about throughout this weekend. And I look at the person of Jesus. He wasn't concerned with stuff. He wasn't concerned with activities and to-do lists and where he was going next and this and that and this and that and all the stuff that he could have put into his life. He was concerned about relationship with people, loving people, serving people, and his relationship with the Father. And we have to imitate the person of Jesus in that. To say Jesus Christ was his first priority, was his relationship with God. Jesus took time to pray. He was Jesus. And he took time to pray. So we in our lives have to take the time to do that, to be like Christ in that way. And what does that look like? Because like I said, we get so busy. Some practical things that you guys can do. How many of you possibly, I don't know if any of you do, have the iBrievery app on your phone? Some of you, right? It is this awesome app because it has the daily readings, has all different kinds of prayers that you guys can look at. That's one practical tool that you look at that. You can read the readings every day. It doesn't take that long. You could look at the St. Michael prayer if you don't know, whatever that might be. It includes so many different kinds of things. So that's one way to incorporate prayer in your life, incorporate God in your day to day. How many of you go to Mass regularly on Sundays? You don't have to raise your hands. Some of you in, in this room might not find Mass that important, right? It's just a skip it, it's no problem at all. Whatever, I'll just get there next week. I'm too tired. Can't get there, can't find a ride. Paul Kim gave a talk a couple months ago when I was with him. So I I take no credit for this, but this is what he said. Say I give you $168. What would you say to me? Nothing? Thank you. You're welcome. Go buy whatever you like. Buy a bunch of chicken sandwiches. What if I asked you for a dollar back? Would you give it to me? Yeah, of course, right? How many hours do you think there are in a week? 168. Can we not give one hour back to God by going to Mass on Sunday? Right? That hour comes up and so many times we, like I said, we're too tired. We don't feel like going. We have so many hours in the week. Can we not get to that Sunday Mass? And one, another thing that's enriched my prayer life, enriched 
seeing God in my life has been to add one more mass, to go to daily mass. Because I travel a lot, it can be difficult. But to go to one more mass during the week, that can so, if you go on Sunday and on Thursday, that so connects your week. You're able to take that time. Just you and God, no worries. Just to be at mass and have the Eucharist as the center of your life. That's been so important for me. It's important for us looking at God in the day-to-day to set goals for our prayer life. Especially if you don't have one. It's non-existent. Sometimes you just open up the Bible and put your finger on a verse and just like read a verse. It's important to set goals. And this is the weekend for you guys to maybe start doing that. To say, you know what, when I go home, in order to meet God in my everyday life, I'm going to start opening the Bible. Not just some random page, maybe pick a gospel. Start with Matthew. Say, I'm going to start with the gospel of Matthew, and I'm going to start at chapter 1. And I'm going to start reading the gospel five minutes every day. Just to just take that time and to just be with God and start to nurture that relationship with God as a young person. And that five minutes of peace, I guarantee you, will start to make your relationship with God more real. It will start to bring more peace into your life. And you might start wanting to read 10 minutes and then 15 minutes and 20 minutes. Who knows? You could be reading scripture for an hour a couple of weeks in. Scripture is a beautiful thing. It's a word of God alive, alive in our lives. How many of you guys have a 24-hour adoration chapel at your church? Some of you. Raise your hands high. Wow, a good number of you. So important to spend time with Christ. We can see God in all different kinds of places, like I said, in our families and what we do. But Christ wants to spend time with you. We have these huge nights of adoration that are beautiful and emotional. And that same Jesus that comes, he'll be right here tonight. That's the same Jesus that's in your adoration chapel at your church. And he wants to spend time with you. He wants to be in relationship with you. He desires that. And if you don't desire that at all, if you don't maybe desire to have a prayer life, to have God in your day to day, ask God. See, Lord, give me the hunger to want a prayer life. Give me the hunger to want to see you in my everyday life. So mass, adoration, that funny little app that's awesome. It's also important to look at our community. Because like for a long time, like I said, when I was in college and I was like going to mass, I was doing it a lot alone. I just did it by myself. And that can be hard, right? Loneliness can be a really tough thing. You guys are among your youth groups, among so many people who share in your faith, who share in your excitement about Christ, the Eucharist, all these things. And it's important when we look at that to set goals together and to do it as a community, right? So maybe you want to start reading scripture for five minutes a day and you go to your friend and say, hey, why don't we start reading five minutes of of scripture a day, not necessarily together in the same place, but keeping each other accountable. To text your friend and say, hey, did you read your five minutes of scripture today? So you have that person who's going to ask you and make sure you did it and make sure you have God in that prayer life. Maybe that's going to adoration together. Maybe you start, it, well, it's summer now, right? Woo, summer. You guys can start maybe going to adoration together. Get a group together to say, we're going to go on Thursday night for a half an hour, 7.30 to 8.30. Get a group together and just go together so you don't feel like you're going alone. You're going by yourself. Because that can, you know, you go and you go. And it's you and Christ, which is the most beautiful thing. But when we're doing it as a community, that makes it even more beautiful. To do it with our friends, to do it with people who share our faith. Amen? So you guys are not in this alone. Your relationship with Christ is you and Christ. But in the Catholic Church, 
We're a huge community. We're a community of believers. And that's the thing. You guys will wake up every day. Every speaker that you'll see up here, every person, Ike, myself, we have to wake up every day and consciously choose that relationship with Christ. It's not just a thing you do once to say, yeah, I believe in God. Yes, I'm Catholic. You know, I'm accepting my faith for my own. I have to wake up every day and say, yes, I choose a life of faith and I choose to look for God in my daily life and I choose to have a prayer life. And it's the most exciting, beautiful thing to have that relationship with God. That's not just a random kind of whenever I can kind of thing. But a thing that I put time into, I intentionally do and I intentionally seek Christ. And we can all do the same. You guys can do the same too. And I encourage you, I'm here to encourage you to start now. Start seeking God. Start a rhythm of prayer. Amen. So I want you guys to talk a little bit in, I don't know, your small groups or with a couple people around you. And I want you guys to talk about a couple of things. I want you guys to talk about what your prayer looks like right, prayer life looks like right now. And I want you guys to be open and honest. No one's here to judge. If you don't pray at all, I want you to feel welcome to say, you know what, I have no prayer life whatsoever. That's okay. Wherever you're at, I want you to feel comfortable to, to say where you're at. And then I want you guys to talk about, we're midway, we're about midway through the weekend. I want you guys to talk about openly and honestly about what you feel like you could do in your life when you go home. Maybe some things you want to start in your prayer life. How do you want your relationship with Christ to look? How are you going to seek Christ in your life, in your day-to-day life? Amen?